Here we are. We're on seven. Update seven. Restoration part seven. That's not the part. Is seven parts. Anyway, welcome back. We've been busy at Gunner Racing. We've been working on everybody else's car while we're working on everybody else's cars too. We have a hat which we received about a week ago. It's from our good friend Autocar Jacobs, or Jacobs as we'd say in silly America. It says historic Porsche racing. It's kind of his deal. Autocar, what a name, Autocar, O-T-T-O-C-A-R. The dude's into racing Porsches. You can see he's got a little Club Sport Challenge pin on there, so he evidently hangs out and likes our friends uh, Phil Bagley and Bruce Ellsworth at Club Sport. Okay, here it is, Autocar Jacobs, favorite hat. Historic Porsche Racing, YouTube.com user Autocar. We can't forget Bridget. Bridget is Autocar's lady, and she's awesome. So this is for you, Bridget. Anyway, while I put on Autocar's hat, who is Mr. Porsche? He's Austrian-born. He's been to the factory. He's everything. Thanks, Autocar. We appreciate it. Anyway, back to the 917. Here we are. We're taking the motor out. I say we. I get to watch Fred and Andy do it. Now, to get the motor out, basically the engine is, yeah, I say engine motor, you have to understand, is about two-thirds of the size of the car. And, of course, it's about two-thirds the weight. Even though it's magnesium, it's very light. There are things that have to come apart to get it out. And believe it or not, this very light aluminum bar or uh, roll bar, there's another leg missing that I won't hold up, is the update for 1971. The car didn't have a roll bar, it just had a little bar to hold the roof up, which they called a roll bar. But they uh, mandated, the FIA, that it needed a real roll bar for 71. So you either put the bar in yourself or you sent it back to Porsche. It comes out in three pieces, but the motor won't come out. Uh, Andy's holding up this side of the motor so it doesn't tilt over. But this comes up forward and then it just gets bolted in with these eight millimeter bolts. It's about as simple as it is. Now, Brett here has taken these studs out. You can pan in here and see the length of the stud hits this Brett. back bulkhead. So that gives it a little warming action, which expands the magnesium housing, which helps that bolt that's been in there since this thing was built and who knows when, uh, because most of the time you didn't care about scratching the chassis. The engine will actually come out with that stud in there but you'll take the chassis pipes out. And as you know, they're very thin aluminum. So we like to just take the extra time. And it makes it a lot easier when we pull this beast out, uh, which we'll do in the next segment. You can see they come out with heat. If you didn't, if you didn't put a little heat on them, it, they wouldn't come out. So anyway, in a few minutes as we get the, the uh, hoist hooked up, we'll go ahead and, and hook up to this little beam, which is adjustable. It has a little crank on it to change the angle of the engine so it clears the front of the cockpit and these back pipes. You can see the adjustment right here. Moves this pivoter, this center, back and forth, which changes the angle of the engine. So anyway, we'll uh, take a little time to get these studs out, and uh, then we'll come back. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, the boys now are taking out the front engine mount. It's one big bolt that holds the front cradle in, and they're moving it out right now. You can see Brett's now cranking the angle of the engine, which will load, it's still got a lighten the weight on it and make it a lot easier to come out. But well, while we're waiting for them to do that, just so everybody knows that, you know, I told you my dress was just a common work guy dress. I, I'll wear a tuxedo for some of these things, but, but one, someone said that I had a hole in my pants once, and what it is, it's a little bit of darker area here when they made it that's the stitches, so just so everyone you know, that's watching my crotch while we're doing this. There's no hole in my pants. I've never had a hole in my pants. I just thought I'd throw that out to you. Anyway, we're ready to start cranking this thing up now. Give it a jack. Nice right long titanium there, bolt. There's the titanium bolt, Teton. Very light. That's what holds the front of the engine up. And there's two bolts that hold the back up. That's it. Three bolts hold this whole engine in. I'm the jack guy. They call me Jack Me. Stop, stop. Okay, now delicately, delicately, we all play a role here on coming up. Everyone's going to tell me forward, backward, more or less. We'll discover how much stuff we forgot to disconnect. It looks all right. 
But inch oh, by inch. Right up. You can see there's not much room. Bring the camera in here, Sharon. You can see the valve Andy, cover where it hits the chassis hard. in here. Oh, don't push the hard. I'm trying to keep the. And if you look over running. here, okay. you can see this drive. That's, That's for the, the second cover. alternator for Le Mans. Of course, the car wouldn't need it now, but that little extension off the camshaft is for the Le Mans alternator. All right, here we are. You can see the motors coming up slowly. Now, when we take the motor out, we're not worried about it scratching this paint. The paint you see is gray but it would be black. When it left the factory, this paint, the chassis was painted black and the fenders would have been gray. Now we'll change the angle to get the front of it clear. You can see how close it is to the valve cover here now. It almost looks like it would never go inside there. And you can see how close it is. So it's a pretty tedious job. You can imagine when we put the engine back in, what we have to do to the chassis to protect it to try to keep the paint from being chipped. Drop the motor a little bit. Okay. Now we have to go back and change the angle again. This is where this little adjustable hoist comes in very handy. Okay, come up. Just let's not get the spark plug wires. Just leave that on and it goes over there. And here we are. It's just coming out now. In between our takes, we're screwdrivering and hammering and making sure there's clearance in spots. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, Come in with the jack, just a hair. Back. You're gonna have to do something because. Right, Andy, bring your corner. Bring, bring, bring tilt the motor like this. Okay, we're on the final pump here. I'm coming up. The boys are standing in. We've got the clutch cable loose on the bottom, which hung us up a little. As soon as it clears, we'll drag it free. Then I'll show you how light this thing is. The three of us will pick it up and we'll show you how light a 917 is without the engine. All right. Okay. Make sure it doesn't cook for it, Kevin. Whoa, yo, yo, yo. Ouch. Okay. But there's your engine, 5.4 liter. We'll come up with a weight for everybody so they can see how much this beast weighs. But Sharon can bring the camera around and look inside the engine compartment here. It's just basically a bunch of aluminum tubes kind of scab welded together. You can look at some of the welds if you can dial in. Basically, the welds are a gusset. They put extra weld inside and that strengthens it as they anneal the tube as it's welded. They just put a little more weld in there. This is all done with a wire feed. These weren't just hand done. They had a wire feed uh, aluminum, and, and that's how they all welded it together. You can see the brackets that hold in the roll bar. And again, that was something that was done after the fact, so they just kind of scabbed in there. But that's the only way it was done. You can see the little tiny roll bar in here. It's just basically a 25 millimeter pipe or an inch in English terms. And that just basically holds the roof up. So until we get to eight, thanks uh, Andy and Brett for taking the motor out. I just kind of held the stand and the, and the hoist. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.